Ogoni youths have shut down the Eleme Oné area of East West Road over the alleged failure of the federal government to mobilize contractors to fix it. They complained that the road had remained deplorable for years, while the Alato Bridge, which serves as the only route to Oné oil and gas free zone, Port Harcourt Refinery, and other multinational companies, was collapsing. The youths had earlier given the federal government a 14 day ultimatum to mobilize contractors to the site or face a shutdown of the nation's oil and gas activities. Brandishing placards, the youth under the aegis of Ugoni Youth Federation took to the streets before 7 a.m., barricaded the Aleto Junction and Port Harcourt Refinery Junction. Well, joining us to discuss this is Celestin Akbobari. He's the National Coordinator of Ugoni Solidarity Forum. Thank you very much, Mr. Celestin, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Yeah. All right. So, um, I, I know that I know that stretch because I have lived in Port Harcourt for years and I have known of cases of robberies, even early hours of the morning when people are trying to ply that road. It's 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 been bad for years. Uh, but I'm wondering why it has taken this long for people to the people in those areas to appeal to the senses of the federal government and of course the Ministry of Works. Um, we know that every year. Uh, every budget cycle, monies are allocated for these federal roads to be fixed or to be reconstructed. Um, what has your organization been doing to follow up, um, you know, the progress reports coming from the Ministry of Works? Why has it taken so long to get any explanation whatsoever? Well, I need to correct the impression uh, the protest is being carried out under the auspices of Open the People's um, Assembly, OPA. Okay. So, OPA, Ogoni People's Assembly, is an umbrella body, a coalition of, of every other organizations within Ogoni, including the organization that I lead. Um, yeah, we, it has taken this long uh, for us to react because um, um, government constantly tell us that the contract for that road has been awarded. And actually, um, contractor handling that 15 kilometer stretch, the ROCC, they, are, they have a plant yard in Ogoni. So um, you have to give them a, a chance, you know. And so we have we are just been pushed to the wall. We are tired of waiting. And the road has become so bad, terribly bad, that um, a journey of 25 minutes from Portaco to Ogoni. Now take people 24 hours, 48 hours, from 24 to, 40, to 48 hours, especially if the uh, trucks, any of the trucks, fall on the road because of the bad spots. So it's been terribly bad, terribly bad. I mean, you, you, you can just imagine the pain that, that we go through each time this thing happens. So um, that's why we decided Now you can see the bridge. Uh, Tankers and trucks fall into this bridge from time to time. And, 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 and these tankers are not owned by Ogoni people. They are owned by other Nigerians that are conveying petroleum products from the refineries or uh, trucks that are carrying heavy metals from the seaports or the petrochemical plants. And these are all federal government investments. This same road leads to Aquaibon and um, Cross River. So all the trucks from Aquaibom and Prosiba also pass here. Uh, and so uh, um, we've been pushed to the wall. The river has got into our neck and we can no longer breathe. And that's why we are you know, reacting now. I'm curious because um, now that your people are on that road, and I'm, don't get me wrong, protests are okay, but you have barricaded that road, meaning that it's difficult for people to go to work. People who are going to work in Eleme Petrochemical, the refinery, people cannot go. People who are traveling cannot ply that road. Yes, we know it's a difficult, you know, journey. But, of course, economic activities also have been halted on that stretch, meaning that the government is not necessarily affected by this, but it's your people, the people in River State, that are really adversely affected by this move of yours. Um, so how do you get the government's attention if it's the people themselves that are feeling the heat? Well, that's, that's really very unfortunate. But that is a price you have to pay for every good thing. You know, that road is for all of us. 
since government has refused to do anything about it, we have decided to shut down economic activities within that region. And um, unfortunately, <laughs> we're going to people have to pay the price. But I can tell you that just like food, when it is being cooked, you can see, you know, the conflict between the fire and the food and everything. But when it is done, people enjoy the meal. So I think that's exactly what is happening. When they fix this road, all of us will enjoy it. We'll forget the pains. But it is better to, to suffer a little discomfort, you know, to fix this thing once and for all. How many um, memos or how many petitions have been sent to the members that are representing the Ogoni, um, you know, parts of River State on the floor of the National Assembly? How many have you sent? How many times have you picketed the Federal Ministry of Works to deal with this issue? Like I said at the beginning, monies are devoted to the refurbishing or the uh, refixing of these federal stretches. I mean, the, if we start to open the books on the East West Road and the federal highways that are yet to be fixed, but monies are still, you know, given out every, every budget cycle, we probably would not end this show. But in your case, because this one concerns you and concerns your businesses and your economic activities, how much pressure have you put on the federal government? Because it's not enough to do a protest on that axis and block the road. How much information has been going back and forth between your people and the Federal Ministry of Works and members that are representing your constituency on the floor of the National Assembly? Well, let's, let's, let's put the record straight. Um, all the roads that fall under Section 1 to 4 from Wari to Calabar, Section 1 to 4 on the East West Road, they are under the Ministry of Niger Data, not Ministry of Works. Okay. But graciously, Mr. President, in 2018, September 2018, after the visit of some Ogoni leaders to Mr. President, graciously, Mr. President um, gave this uh, road to transfer the road from the Ministry of Niger Delta to PIDF, that is Presidential Infrastructural Development Fund. They are the people funding the canal. Abuja Road. Formerly it was 155 billion, now over 900 billion. Mm -hmm. They are the people funding the Lagos Ibadan Road, 600 billion. They are the people funding the Second Niger Bridge, it was 200 billion, now over 400 billion because of the access road. So, Mr. President, graciously transferred this road to PIDF. Now, the Minister for Niger Delta goes with Akpabio. When they are asked PIDF to transfer the money meant for the road to so his and PIDF say no, we pay money to contractors directly. That is why people are working in day and night under us. So at Pabio now, we do the road. That's, that's, that's the problem we have. But we are saying that Rotimi Amechi is borrowing money to build a way across the country. Those money that they are borrowing will be paid with oil from, from, from the Niger Delta. Fashola is building about 800 roads, the money he's using will be taken from another data. So how come that Akpavio cannot get money from anywhere to build these roads? And why take it from PIDF in the first place? Because all the roads under PIDF, they meet every fortnight with Mr. President, being represented by the Chief of Staff. So they meet from 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 p.m. in the night. Mm -hmm. Every month, they meet to reassess and look, evaluate what is happening. And that's why work is going on day and night on these roads that I tell you. And that was what, you know, Mr. President ambition for the Niger Delta roads. And that what would have happened, but he took the road back. And that's why we are protesting, asking that the road be sent back to PIDF. Because we are tired of waiting. You say you are looking for money, you are looking for money. When there are parts of money, where this road was to be fixed, and you took it from there. So that's what, uh, but from our interaction with them recently, we observed that um, it, it's like uh, God we are you want to change the contractor. That is not our business. You can bring any contractor you you want or you have, but we want our road to be fixed. So that's that's just the thing. Uh, and 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 you have said that you have had interactions with them. You gave an ultimatum. That ultimatum seems to have expired. You're still here protesting. Do you think that they that? Senator Gospel Okwabi will bulge anytime soon. Is he going to 
find the money that he's looking for anytime soon. I mean, I'm wondering where he's going to find money. But if you have said that there was money allocated and he went to get it, um, the onus is on him to get the money back from wherever he, he took it and, you know, to fix your road. But do you see him doing that anytime soon? And don't forget that this protest that you're protesting is at the expense of your people and the economic activities. And don't forget the cost of living in Nigeria is rising high and everybody's trying to survive. So where does this all end? Well, um, incidentally, um, Chief Gosby Akwabio is a Port Harcourt boy. He's, is he? He's from Akwabon. He's, he's a Niger Death Town. His people pass through that road to Port Harcourt and to everywhere. So um, he has written for a meeting with us, and, but he couldn't come. The PAMSEC came and I discussed with our leadership, but we insisted that he should come. And um, I expect that he will come, but if he doesn't come, um, our people have decided to remain on that road. Don't forget that as long as that road is shut down, no activity will go on in the two refineries, the petrochemical plant, the fertilizer plant, the two seaports, the oil and gas free zone, and, and, and several other uh, economic activities in the area. And I can tell you that this road, you know, um, contributes trillions of naira um, on the daily basis into the coffers of Nigerians and the government. The border of Bonny Road that is being built, we empty onto this road. So that's, that's why we are asking that um, this road should be fixed. It, it is for the benefit of not only the Ogoni people, Opobo people pass here, Okirika people pass here, Andoni people pass here, all of us pass here. Okay. Uh, is, is the government of uh, Governor Newsom Wike strongly behind you? Are they support in support of this protest? Because, you know, uh, the governor is known as Mr. Projects. He's been, um, you know, developing a lot of roads in the states. Uh, has he said anything about this protest? And uh, he, what's his position in closing? Well, I've not heard anything from him, but I know that when he took over power as governor of River State, I heard that uh, the companies in this, in, that, in this region contributed money uh, to give to him to fix the road. And uh, we were thinking that it would fix the road, but, um, you know, we are where we are. I know the um, temporary uh, measure we are uh, carried out. Some people, the, the road was fixed in some bad spots, but it was not up to three months, and uh, we got back to where we used to be. And so this time we need a permanent solution. So, it, be, so, so it means that, it means that whoever, viable. so it means that whoever the government acts to, you know, patch the roads, did a shoddy job because you're saying that in three months, everything collapsed all over again. No, I mean, I, will, I won't say that they did a shoddy job. If, if you know the volume of traffic on that road, do you know how many trucks, you know, that convey heavy metals from the two seaports to neighboring Emu, Abia, all the eastern states? So, but, but the construction person should have states. known that that's well, a heavy so, traffic. I mean, after, after a papa, Every construction person, whoever is constructing a road, would know that this is a heavy-duty road. This is a highway that has trucks because there are refineries on that stretch. They should know when they're patching up or they're trying to fix a road partially. They should know what they're doing. But again, I say, maybe he did a shoddy job, and that's why in three months the road has gone back to worse. Well, yeah, not I, can't, worse. I'm not I can't defend the contractor, but there is a difference between... A rehabilitation and a reconstruction of the road. I think uh, if they are reconstructing this road now, uh, it will be quite different from mere uh, patching for people to pass, not filling the portals for people to pass. So um, I think we are asking that, um, and now we, I mean, we, we shouldn't even beg government to fix this road because it is, it is, it is, it is their trucks and their tankers that use the road even more than the. And you people, pay taxes, even more than don't our you? Neighbors. What? And, and you pay your taxes, so your taxes are supposed to fix of the course, roads. We do, we do, we do. So, um, um, but this one, graciously, uh, Mr. President transferred this road to PRDF. So, our brother Fabio should take this road back to PRDF. We want to see contractors on site. All right. We want to end this madness once and for all. Okay. This approach must live. 
Well, uh, Celestina Poveri is of the Ogoni Solidarity Forum. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. We'll keep our eyes on what's happening on that stretch. And of course, uh, you'd keep us uh, informed on the recent developments as the days go by. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, well, thank you all for being part of the conversation. It's been a very interesting one. I am Mary Anna Kona. I will see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. Have a good evening.